Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So today we're going to be reviewing the Walkera Rodeo 110 little micro FPV quadcopter. Now Walkera's had a series of these. Um, this kind of follows suit with the F210 line and they went down to the Rodeo uh, 150 and now they have a little Rodeo 110. I will have the links to this guy and what I'm going to be using in this review down in the description. So go ahead and click on that and check the current pricing on this little micro FPV racer. This will be a full review. This will be an unboxing inspection setup and also a flight test and a pros and cons. After we're done here on this table here in the living room, we'll go out there and we'll do our flight test. So anyway, here's the box. We got the specifications. I'm not gonna go ahead and read them all off to you, but if you want, go ahead and pause the video and take a look at that and or click on the link in the description. There's the back of the box and here's the side and back to the front again. So let's go ahead and unbox this thing. It looks like what we need to do is first open up this little tab and just nice and easy sliding over the top. Open the top there. So we're greeted with a little warning here, hot tips, watch the video tutorials and read the manual carefully before using this product on wakera.com. So go ahead and go over to wakera if you need more information after you watch uh, my review. Anyway, there it is. So first thing in the box that we're greeted with is the little um, F110. Now, actually what I should go over is on the side of the box here, I've got these kind of black check marks. And this is the RTF version. It looks like there's multiple versions available. So I've got a black little check mark on the RTF here, as well as this comes with the Devo 7 controller, comes with the battery, and it also comes with a charger. Looks like there also is a BNF version, bind and fly, where it does not come with uh, the controller. But this will be the RTF version. So first off, I have a USB to micro USB cable. That's gonna be for tapping into the flight controller. And here we go, so extra propellers. Looks like I've got two in this bag. So look at these little three bladed propellers. So nice little kind of see-through red propellers here. And it looks like they have kind of a dual screw uh, lock mechanism for the little micro motors they are. And then here is another set of two. So they are giving us a full set of propellers and there's already four on the quad, so that's great. So a full extra set. Top tier's empty, gonna take that foam off. And here's the bottom tier. So a Devo 7 controller. These are great controllers. They got great range and they work very well. You can use this with a lot of different crafts if you go ahead and just buy the, um, the Devo receivers in different models if you wanted to. Great controller. Here is the instruction manual, and this looks like the trainer cable. And then it looks like the only other thing in the box is this charger. Okay guys, so here it is. Wakera Rodeo 110. Now, very reminiscent of all the other Rodeo and F210 products that they've recently had. Um, the F210 had the same deal, kind of had that bug look to it. Um, and then they followed suit with the Rodeo 150. So the next iteration in the minimizing size line is this one here. So here we go, we can see that uh, the motors actually, are these just push on propellers? Nope, they do have little screws down in there. So it looks like you're gonna have to push them over the shaft, motor shaft there, and then you're gonna have to lock them in with two screws. So look at those small little mini motors there. We got a little protective motor guard here with the motor feet and everything's looking pretty well done here. Then we've got the ESCs in the arms here. This is kind of Walkera has like a modular design where you can just unscrew the ESCs from the bottom. You see that little screw hole there and you can pop off their ESCs and go ahead and replace them pretty easily. There's a micro USB port for putting into your flight controller to change some settings. Further coming around the back here, here's the bottom actually. And this is kind of interesting. What Walkera does is they go ahead and they give you an extra port to hook up another receiver if you wanted to. So if you wanted to change the receiver and hook up your own transmitter, you can go ahead and plug in your receiver there. And here's a switch in the bottom that actually changes it from S bus to PPM and that's gonna be switching this port as well. So 
couple of op options here that Walcare is providing you that they've been providing for a while. Anyway, here's the battery. So going ahead and just kind of pulling this thing off. It's already Velcroed in here with this nice little Velcro strap. Let's just go ahead and pull this out. 7.4 volt, 850 milliamp battery. I believe the Rodeo 150 had the same exact um, type of battery. I'm not sure if it's the same milliamp hour, but very similar. GST connector and a balance plug. And the balance plug is what you're gonna be plugging in here to charge it on the provided balance charger they give you. Really simple type of charger, so that's great. It's probably gonna take about an hour to charge that. So if you have a hobby grade charger, it'll take a little less time to charge. We've got this little insignia on the, the battery plate here, Rodeo 110. And then just looking down here underneath the battery strap, dip switches there to change your FPV channels. So if you have goggles that you wanted to um, change or you're having interference, if you're racing from somebody, go ahead and switch those for your FPV. And there's also this little, um, this little bind button here. So that little button there is either gonna be changing the um, transmit frequency or the transmit power rather of the VTX video transmitter, or this is a bind button for, it looks more like a bind button. Anyway, here's the receiving antennas for the control, just sticking out the back. We can see that it's got this kind of interesting little mo um, module here where you plug in the battery here, the JST female portion here, and then we have where the antennas come out for the receiver, and then we have the video transmitting antenna all kind of built into this one little module hub. Not really a whole lot more to see on this thing, except the front has got this white LED light right here. Here's the FPV camera. Let me just go ahead and take off this little protector there. And there's our FPV camera. Let's see how this thing's gonna work. So can we rotate it? Yeah, so it looks like we can have some slight rotation if we go ahead and loosen this screw on either side. See how there's two screws. We can go ahead and position this make it straight out for a beginner flyer or push it more up for more advanced flyers so you can see the horizon while you're flying faster. So we are still getting those options. That's great because, you know, some of the newer micro FPVs like that give you a limited ability to adjust the camera tilt. So it's good that they're still providing the option to tilt that camera. So when we're out doing our flight test, I'll go ahead and go over this more, but this should be the mode button for the different modes of flight. So we'll have attitude mode, which is self-leveling with nose flips, uh, like a ratitude flips, but with self-leveling, and then we should have a full acro mode here, hopefully. So anyway, guys, let's go ahead and charge this thing up. Here's the battery bay. It's just a basically basic Devo 7 controller. So these are all the same. But you get this little battery caddy. You can use eight AA batteries, or it's got a JST connector. So you can go ahead and put in like a two to three S battery in here. And so you don't have to deal with AA batteries. So that's a great option if you wanted to just use your own lithium battery. Anyway guys, enough talking about the thing. Let's go ahead and get this thing out. I'll get the batteries charged up, get my FPV going so you guys can see that. And let's go ahead and do a flight test outside put it through its paces, maybe do some crashing, and then do a pros and cons and see how this thing did. All right, let's go fly. All right guys, so at the park with the little Rodeo 110. So what we're gonna be doing here is doing a quick little line of sight where I just control it and you can see it, you know, close up and fly around with this camera. And then I'm gonna pop on the Fat Sharks and record those for you while I do a little FPV flight test and record the video that's coming out of here so you guys can see um, how this thing performs FPV. What I will do is I'll go ahead and use the stock battery for a quick line of sight and also the FPV flight. And then actually what I wanted to do was test this 3S. The stock battery is 2S, uh, but this um, Nanotech 450 is 3S. And I just wanted to see if this thing could possibly take you know, a 3S battery, 3S power, and see how it performs. Now it's gonna be, you know, just about half of the um, milliamp hour capacity, but it's the higher voltage. So we'll see if it can take it or not. I didn't wanna use this until I go ahead and do the flight test with the stock battery, just in case this blows it up. So let's go ahead and fire this thing up and see how it performs. So controller on first, then the craft. Go ahead and let it chime up, and we should be ready to go. So with this one, I believe um, arming is this stick to the bottom, yeah, center. Actually, it's out. 
so down and out is arming on this one so we're going to go ahead and arm and launch so this is self-leveling mode let me just get a little bit more out in the field here so down and to the left to arm and here we go so i'm just going to fly it a little bit in self-leveling mode do have a little bit of breeze coming from this direction you can see how it's pushing it that way all right cool so just gonna fly really quickly um, just for a minute or so line of sight let's just see what the punch test is here's the yaw actually first so a pretty decent yaw rate you can see that there that's sticked all the way to the left let's just get a little close-up of it before we go ahead and start flying it around so a pretty neat looking little guy you can see it has a little LED light in the front there and let's go ahead and do our punch test. So from a hover to a punch, this is the 2S stock battery now. Punching now. So actually, really quick for a 2S. Kind of reminds me of the Rodeo 150. It did have a lot of punch on a 2S as well. So here's our uh, flight modes. So this one, you can see I can't flip it. I'm pushing all the way left and right and the thing will not go past a certain extent. If I flip this one down to the middle, that mix button, she'll be able to do flips, so let's try it. If I push the stick all the way to the right, yeah, it's a nice, not too fast, not too slow flip, giving it some throttle, pushing the stick all the way to the left and then throttle back on when it's level. Now this is self-leveling, you can see when I do let off the stick, it will um, go back to its level eventually, but you can still do the flips. So switching all the way down is going to be full acro mode. And it's doing very well. So this mode completely eliminates the accelerometer to self-level. So if you push the stick in one direction, it's going to stay going that way until you push the stick back. So it takes a little while to fly acro. Let's see if it's as fast as in um, Ratitude mode. Punching and flipping, yep. So it's got the same rates pretty much. Cool, so I'm gonna go back into self-leveling. Let's just do like a forward punch test. So I'm gonna go full stick forward and punch it. So it is pretty quick. Come on back. Cool, so let's go ahead and land this thing and put on the FPV goggles. And this one I wouldn't really land in your hand because it's got the props are always spinning when it's armed. Actually, no, they're not always spinning. Let's try. It. Let's go ahead and try it. Let's just go la put her hand out and land in her hand. Yeah, I forgot. These ones, these ones don't always spin. But if you do that, be careful because you could accidentally lift off again. So it's still armed. It looks like it's going to take a while to disarm. And then, so this one down to the right. You hear those two beeps and that's disarmed. So cool, let's go ahead and throw on these fat shark goggles and see how it does FPV. All right, cool, so I got a nice clear picture in the FPV goggles. I just have a monopole antenna on these goggles. So let's go ahead and arm this thing, give it a flight. So arming and then lifting off. Here we go, so this is self-leveling mode. Um, Wow, FPV, what's up? So I got just a little bit of a way and the FPV is really kind of cutting out quite a bit. Let's see if I can change the channel. I thought I was in the right channel. Let me go ahead and land it. Let's see if I can switch the channel out. One channel up, nope. Boy, man, I have FPV problems like there's no tomorrow <laughs> with these guys. Anyway, um, let's just go ahead and fly it around as it is. This should be the right channel. This is the clearest one I could find. Um, what I might do, let me just go ahead and put on a um, cloverleaf antenna really quick on these goggles. Rearm. There we go. Lift off. Okay, so I'm going to switch into um, I'm going to switch into rate mode really quick. You know what? That's that's a lot better actually. The video, so I'd recommend switching out a monopole if you are using it on the 
your goggles for like a clover leaf. Even though it seems like a monopole would work good. So I'm just switching right, uh, straight to acro mode. Still getting some pretty bad lines in the screen. And let's just try to do a flip, punch test flip. Wow, I can already hear the battery from my from my uh, line of sight. So this is going to be a quick little FPV on this one. Then we're going to put that 3S battery in. And I think those lines may be because of low power too. You know what I mean? It does feel like it's flying pretty darn good though. Whoa. Okay. So went ahead and crashed. So you know what? Sorry about that short little FPV flight. But let's go ahead and... Um, disarm here, put on the 3S battery, and do another FPV session. Okay, so you can see the low battery alert. I'm just going to unplug that because that's kind of irritating. But that was low battery cut off. You know? So I'm going to shut everything down and put in this, um, this little 3S. Now this is going to be a really short flight time, but at least you'll you know, be able to see if it can handle uh, 3S and just how good it performs in 3S. It did pretty good in 2S. Sorry, I think I used up most of the battery in that line of sight, but let's just see how it does with the 3S. Okay, 3S is in, recording the um, FPV again. And let's just see how this one does this time with 3S. I uh, may very well blow it up, but it seems like it's okay so far. So, I'm going to go ahead and arm, launch. Whoa, jittery, you're gonna switch into acro right away. Seems a little jittery in, um, you know, self-leveling. So I'm just in acro now, so this may be the way to go in acro. Wow, you can see that FPV breakup, man. I don't know if it's Wakara or what, but um, seems like I'm always having video issues with with these guys regardless uh, we're just gonna go ahead and fly it punch test seems really peppy on 3s and definitely handle it so you may want to just fly this one pretty close to yourself um, you know just because it's pretty darn bad breakup in the FPV screen. You can see how bad it is. It's even worse than it was on 2S. Go a little lower. Go ahead and try to change like a channel on it real quick on my FPV. No. Nope. I just changed like one channel down and it's still pretty whacked out. You can see that there. So it's really hard to see anyway I'm just gonna fly this one actually seems a little better I got pretty bad white squiggly weird lines in there but it seems like it's better than the last channel so flying around so it, you know able to con it, it flies well let me just put it that way there's our low our low level again so that was really quick so I'm already getting a low level blink, like audible beep. So this thing is gonna be um, landing any time now. So let me bring it a little bit closer. Oh, there it goes. Disarm this. It looked like it crashed on the other side of the fence. So let me go ahead and grab this thing. We'll do a final pros and cons wrap up. Okay guys, so the Wakara 110. Let's see what we can do for our pros and cons on it. So, um, just to let you know, when it did actually hit the fence over there. It came in, I was losing battery power and signal, and let me just show you what the aftermath is of hitting the fence and crashing. So I got a little bit of dirt on this prop here, and one of these props, this one, actually just kind of bent up. So you may get away with just, you know, bending it down with this little guy and flying as long as you can bend this down straight. So it does seem durable 
more so than some of the other little minis like this you know the arms are pretty strong stronger than some others like um, I just flew that UB X 130 and I was pretty disappointed in that UB one but this one flies let's just go through a little pros and cons this one flies good the FPV I can't say the same thing for the FPV the FPV is just pretty crappy um, for some reason with Wakara I always have issues with um, tuning in with my fat sharks. I do have the 32 channel module in here and it may have just been me but gosh you know I tried all different channels to get this thing working but the FPV did not look very good at all. Got a little better when I put on this clover leaf antenna but when I was using the monopole you could see how that was in the beginning. Uh, it could handle a pro, it could handle 3S so I have this little 3S battery uh, that I just tried on that last FPV flight test. Really short flight time. So the one they give you is probably good enough. You know, that's going to give you a decent amount of flight time. I'll go ahead and have the numbers pop up on the screen for that flight time. So you can see, I'll go ahead and compile it from the line of sight flight and also the FPV flight. So you can see just how long this lasted. And this one obviously is just about half as as big so it's gonna last half as long if not less but I did like this thing it is an RTF it flies very well uh, the only problem again was the FPV it looks like it is gonna handle some crashes so maybe for like a beginner that's getting into like mini micro FPV you know for outdoor flight this may be good for you um, I just would be kind of careful of that you know FPV disconnect and bad quality signal again you know that may have been something with my setup here but I have a lot of these things I do a lot of reviews and I have not have had as much problems as I do with Wakara products for some reason um, with my fat shark goggles so anyway I do a lot of reviews like this so check out the channel I think you'll like it and don't forget to check this guy out down in the um, description of the video so you can see like the pricing and more in-depth specs on this and see what it's all about all right guys thanks for watching and see you in the next video